Ever wonder where the line blurs between art and craft in cooking? Is cooking simply a craft, a precise execution of recipes? Is it an art form, a showcase of a chef's creativity? Or is it something else entirely? Well, in this video, I am going to explore this age-old question and perhaps come up with a more nuanced conclusion. But along the way, we'll discover why mastering both craft and artistry is vital for any aspiring cook or chef and how this unique blend elevates food from a simple substance to an unforgettable experience. I believe there's people that as a byproduct of their creativity are creating art. Yeah. I think mean, there's people that don't sit out to think, I'm going to make this look mm. like a Van Gogh picture, but because they're so bloody good at their job and, mm. and they just understand how to play it and they just have a natural mm. gift, like they do create art. You know, you look at Michael Wignall's food, mm. that is some of the most crazy looking, precise, clean plates of food I've yep. ever seen, you know, and people like that. And like, I don't, like, I don't know him and I've never, I had the pleasure of meeting him, but I guarantee you wouldn't tell you he was an artist, but I'm looking at it and I'm taking that for art. So I think it's very subjective. That's where, you know, plating is such a key point in, in food because it because that's where people can really showcase their skills. Yeah. You, if you can make a dish look insane and taste out of this world, that that is art and craftsmanship. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name's Tom. I've been a professional food photographer for the past 10 years, and this is a discussion I've had many times with chefs and cooks alike. And over this time, I've seen positions shift, including my own. As cooking evolves and the visual side of food becomes much more important. For many, cooking has either been seen as simply a craft or as an art. But for me, like most things in life, it's more complicated than that. Simple answers are seldom the whole story. For example, I started this video with a quote from the brilliant Anthony Bourdain. He said, cooking is a craft, I like to think, and a good cook is a craftsman, not an artist. There's nothing wrong with that. The great cathedrals of Europe were built by craftsmen, though not designed by them. Practicing your craft in expert fashion is noble, honorable, and satisfying. But then on the other side of the argument, we get opinions like this. If anything, food is a more intimate form of art compared to others, as it incorporates all the senses. Or another quote I liked, good food, like good art, is aware of its environment and can create memories and evoke feelings in much the same way. So is cooking art? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Well, it will probably help to start with the definition of art, and clearly you can find many, but the one that really resonates with me is the one that emphasizes its lack of function or practical use. This is an idea championed by figures in the aesthetic movement of the late 19th century. One famous quote that captures this sentiment is from the French poet and art critic, Théophile Gautier. L'art pour l'art. <laughs> Please excuse my terrible French, but that also means art for art's sake. This phrase suggests that art doesn't need to serve any practical purpose or have any function other than to be appreciated as art. The concept implies that the value of art lies in the beauty and ability to evoke emotion, rather than any utility it might provide. Gautier was one of the key figures to populate this idea, which later influenced writers and artists such as Oscar Wilde or James McNeil Whistler. Wilde, for instance, expressed a similar view in his preface for The Picture of Dorian Gray. He said, all art is quite useless. I think this statement reflects the belief that the highest form of art exists purely for its own sake, without the need for justification through utility or moral purpose. So for me, this immediately makes cooking not an art form, as at its most base level, it has a clear function and purpose, to be eaten and to provide sustenance. But as with all crafts, the best cooks and chefs want to elevate it to something delicious and extraordinary. Check out the video here to see how some chefs get their ideas and how you can use the same techniques to truly elevate your plates. Don't get me wrong, I totally get that there is a talent and a creative side to the act of recipe generation and the cooking of stunning dishes, many of them featured on this channel. Many of the world's best chefs have got to where they are because they have a unique and skillful way of cooking and serving food. But I believe most of them would tell you that they couldn't do that without first mastering the basic techniques. First, as a chef, I'm a craftsman. Mm. Interesting. Yes, yes, um, obviously because I, 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 every cut, every, every incision that I make, I want it to be, I try to challenge mm. nature and create straight lines when no line in existence is truly straight. Mm. I try to put things in the perfect position when nothing is perfect. I try to cook things to the perfect temperature when in reality, that is a fleeting moment. It's only perfect for a, past, a moment of time. Then the temperature changes. Then the consistency changes. The protein congeals. I try to capture lightning in a bottle every time like we are ambitious cowboys of sorts where we where we in, where we appeal where we're not where we aspire cooking has to follow certain guidelines a chef can't just throw random ingredients on a plate and call it a masterpiece if it doesn't taste good nobody's going to care about their artistic vision 
food has to meet certain standards. It needs to be both appealing and delicious. If you sometimes feel that you're guilty of just throwing your mise en place onto the plate with no thought, then why not download my Plate Like a Pro guide from the description below. It's a great place to start being more intentional with your presentations. It's completely free, so if you find any value in it, then a like to this video or subscribing to the channel would be really appreciated. It will certainly help this channel to grow and to get this video seen by more passionate platists on YouTube. That's where the idea of craft comes in. Think of craft like pottery or my own profession photography. They allow for creativity, but you still need to understand and follow certain techniques or understand them enough to intentionally break them. A poorly fired pot will crack. Photos out of focus or underexposed will never make it onto anyone's wall or into a magazine. And it's the same with cooking. If you don't master the basics, like knife skills or understanding how to simmer versus poach, your dishes will fall flat. To paraphrase the well-known New York chef Kenny Sopsin, craft people care about their audience while artists don't have to. He suggests being a craftsman is a more notable profession than being an artist. Even though I consider my own photography a craft, I'm not sure I completely agree with this, as plenty of artists want to connect with their audience too. But I think Sopsin's got a point when it comes to cooks and chefs. And like most creatives, chefs are in the business of instant gratification. We literally consume their work, and in my case, pretty quickly too. A dish has to grab us right away, or its beauty will start to degrade. Chefs have to know what's going to make our taste buds sing from the first bite, and that's where the craft must come in. Artists and musicians, on the other hand, create things that last longer. We can take our time with their work, go back to it, and think about it deeply. It doesn't have to wow us instantly. Art is different. It's not about practicality, it's about exploring ideas and feelings. Artists might start with a vague idea and see where it takes them. So can chefs be artists? Well, I think it's a challenge because they must simultaneously produce immediate gratification while maintaining an openness to reflection, exploration and interpretation. The fleeting transitory nature of food makes it an unlikely candidate for an art subject. But this is a practical challenge, not a logistical roadblock. The best chefs like Batura, Keller, Blumenthal or Red Zepp manage to create food that is gratifying, a visual tour de force with a narrative or story that resonates with diners. In today's culinary landscape, chefs and cooks need to be more flexible with their craft. It's not just about creating delicious food, but also about presenting it in a way that is visually captivating. The act of cooking itself is undeniably a craft. Mastering techniques, balancing flavours and ensuring the dish fulfils the primary function of nourishment. However, for me, the art comes alive in the presentation. In our social media driven world where visuals reign supreme, plate design has become an essential aspect of the dining experience. It's no longer enough for food to simply taste good, it needs to look stunning too. A chef could easily serve a delicious meal without any thought to presentation, but that would be missing an opportunity to elevate the dish to a new level. It's in plate design where a chef transforms from a craftsman into an artist. By intentionally considering composition, colour, texture, proportion and scale, they can create an ephemeral work of culinary art that engages the diner's senses beyond just taste. The artistry lies in these details that in the real world serve no function other than to enhance the overall dining pleasure and enjoyment. Moreover, some cooks and chefs embody the heart of an artist with their desire for destruction and starting over. And this is where I become an artist and no longer a craftsman because um, could I be happy with my craft? Maybe. I could actually be happy enough with the, doing the things I do and improving on them and perfecting them as a craftsman. But as an artist, you want to destroy and start over. I am sure every artist wished that they could create in a brand new style of art. I'm, I'm sure you'd wonder how many traditional artists wish they could sculpt or how many forms of musicians who are of one deviation wish that they could transition into something else, but they'd never be accepted. So when I do create something, I do want it to be something that emotionally resonates with me internally and it's unfamiliar as well. Mm. And it, 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 it tells me a story because a lot of what I do as well is storytelling. As chefs, we are storytellers. This pursuit of a higher experience through new plate design ideas, techniques, ingredients and flavour combinations, pushing the boundaries of culinary creativity is what sets the best chefs and cooks apart from their peers. This constant exploration, reinvention and experimentation mirror the spirit of an artist. While their dedication to perfecting their craft ensures the final product is both delicious and visually appealing. It's in this delicate balance between the artistry and craftsmanship that a chef truly shines creating dishes that are not only satisfying, but also memorable and inspiring. Now, one common argument I've heard against food as art is that it lacks the ability to communicate, but I think that's simply not true. And another reason why it should be seen as a hybrid creative endeavor, food can indeed communicate emotions, ideas, and cultural heritage, much like other art forms. Chefs often use nostalgia or personal experiences to inspire their dishes, which can invoke powerful memories and emotions in their diners. Think of a dish maybe that reminds you of your childhood or one that transports you to a faraway place. Food has the power to tell stories and connect us to our past, our culture and each other. 
Furthermore, not all art communicates deep emotional messages. Some simply offer beauty or provoke thought, which food can most certainly do. The intricate designs on a beautifully plated dish can be just as captivating, in my opinion, as a painting or a sculpture. It can spark curiosity, inspire awe, and even challenge our preconceptions of what food can be. How many do I have to choose? <laughs> oh, well, I mean, who do you go to first? I mean, it has some blue mental. I yep. love to be brainstorming in a room with that man. Yep. I love the whimsical side of him, the yep. exploration, the staying curious. And, you know, the science match with cooking, I find that fascinating. I believe I love as well Jordi Roca. Jordi Roca has got really inner child energy to, to him and he represents that with his desserts. Yep. And I feel like that's so important, that never lose that child. So yep. I totally admire that. It may not always be as explicit as a poem or a song, but it speaks to us in its own unique and delicious way. There you have it. In the world of modern cuisine, chefs aren't just about cooking. They're about transforming into a blend of artists and craftsmen. And it's this mix that makes their delicious creations so extraordinary. It's not enough to simply master the kitchen fundamentals, though these techniques are clearly crucial. Today, a chef needs to weave a story on the plate to engage all our senses, not just taste. And that's why for me, cooking isn't just art and it isn't just craft. It's something even better. It's a symphony of flavours and textures, a visual feast that excites the eyes before it delights the palate. Sure, it takes more effort to consider the artistry alongside the craft, but it's what sets a truly memorable dining experience apart. When you approach cooking with this hybrid mindset, you're not just feeding your diners, you're creating an experience they'll crave again and again. It's about pushing boundaries, sparking conversations, and leaving a lasting impression. Because in the end, the most delicious food isn't just about taste, it's about a whole experience. And that's where the magic truly happens. Do you struggle with how to start plating your dishes? Well, why not click on the video here, which will provide you with a simple framework to get you going. It's called the CRAP framework, no sniggering at the back, please, which stands for contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity. And in the video, you'll learn how to apply these practical techniques to things like color, shape, composition, and size to help you create visual fireworks on your plate.